What's up, everybody? Hope everyone had a good weekend. Got a lot to cover in today's episode, as is usually the case with Mondays. Wild price action over the weekend. New updates in the terror attacker case. A lot of updates that cold down their ecosystem. And some important on-chain metrics that might be indicative of what direction BTC will be going in the near future. Don't forget, hit the like and subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter, at BenCryptoShow. And let's dive in. Market. So first, my poll of the day here on Twitter. Simple poll. Will BTC go up or down this week? Yes, up, down, no. I'm just curious because everyone at this point, the balance is a little bit stronger than expected this weekend. So some people are actually bullish. It seems to be around 50-50 the sentiment. So far, 21 votes. Up is winning with 62% to 38% down. So people are slightly bullish. Again, it's crypto. People always tend to be a little more bullish or they want to be bullish. But who knows? At least the sentiment is positive. So that's good. Tomorrow, I will be doing a fun little poll. It will be, um, I've been planning to do this poll for a while. I'm ready to deploy it tomorrow. Just a fun one. It will be which female crypto influencer has the most romance crypto scam bots using her profile picture so it's just a compliment if you're on the list obviously the romance scam bots are going to pick the more attractive female influencers but beyond that they do seem to have kind of a specific style so i don't know if you're familiar with the bots but there's all sorts of bots some bots try to get people to join a telegram group and try to get people to give money for trading advice some bots take you to a website where somebody's selling a legit trading course and then the the most prevalent is definitely the romance scam bots where for whatever reason they use the profile pictures of known popular girls in the crypto space and then i guess they just try to uh, get talking to guys in the crypto space and then the usual send me money blah 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 but there are a few female influencers which the bots the romance bots have a preference for for whatever reason um and there are four that I've noticed that are the most uh, sort of, you know, the most that their face has been taken and using for these romance bot scams. I don't know why, but there are four leaders. And then it's very close to the top. But there is one, in my experience, this person has the most bots using her face. No idea why, but I'm curious what everyone else's opinion is. So if you're if you're curious, if you're on the list, come check out my page tomorrow at Ben Crypto Show. If you're you're just curious which which people the uh, the romance bots are using come check out my page and i'm also curious to see what everyone else's opinion there might be somebody that i'm missing who's not on the list um and it's very close for number one in my opinion but i'm very curious to see what everyone else has found so tune in tomorrow for the poll of the day it'll be a fun one Price action, so right around 20,000 now. So we had a pretty stronger than express expected bump over the weekend. We had it now it's two weekends in a row, major dip 23.5 to about 21, or uh, more like 22 to about 18, I'd say. Yeah, I misquoted that was last week, and this weekend was about 21.5, 22 to 17,600 at bottom that, and then it rebounded to about 21. Now it's back down at around 20, so it's the usual down, goes up. But not quite to the point it was at previously and then goes back down some more it seems like it has a little more downward momentum still than upward momentum it seems that weekends especially when the volume is low liquidity is low it seems like a lot of hands get shaken out then we'll see what direction price is going bitcoin green fear up so it was at six over the weekend previously it's at six two consecutive days so this is our low for this bear market right here the all-time low is five I, I initially thought the all-time low was six i was wrong it was five in august 2019 so we haven't quite tied the record yet but we're close with six sunday and saturday but then with the had the slight rebound on sunday the green fear on monday went up to nine so sentiment warmed up a little after the weekend then again we do always kind of have a late monday early tuesday pump that could be part of it some more bullish indicators, the Canadian spot ETF, they actually saw large inflows last week. That's this last little thing going up here. So obviously, two weeks ago, right after the first crash, there were large downflows. But then the, those mainstream investors, they appeared to get over it and be bullish. So they had large inflows last week. So that's good news. So this is like mainstream, not whales, but mainstream upper middle class investors aren't too tech savvy but want exposure to the crypto space this just gives you a sort of a 
understanding their, their mindset and they're bullish not too panicked apparently so that's good and this here is by far and away the most important chart so the leverage chart the amount of leverage outstanding is by far and away more than any other more important than any other chart out there because as i've said leverage is indicative of sharp price moves because if BTC goes up or down a little bit, and there's a lot of leverage in the market, then immediately a lot of trades, leverage trades on the other side are going to get just a machine like automatically sold, and it's going to cascade prices either up or down quicker. So the amount of leverage, obviously, there's always going to be an equal amount of leverage longs as leverage shorts. So that doesn't really help us, but just when there's a lot of leverage, again, it's going to be drastic price directions each direction. And right now, Typically, when an object's moving in one direction, it doesn't stop unless enough period, a period, of, a long enough period of time has gone by or some macro event has happened. I mean, the analogy I give, you know, when you're trying to cross the street and then cars are going really slow and they see you, but they just don't stop. When an object is moving in a particular direction, it doesn't stop and it doesn't change direction unless some specific event happens. So the high leverage is a little dangerous in my opinion because I still think the charts or price direction is still kind of going down. It just seems more downward momentum, meaning if for whatever reason some specific, you know, piece of news or macro event happens that triggers a 5%, 7 8% price spike downward, then a bunch of leverage longs are going to be liquidated the leverage shorts will be making money but the leverage longs will be liquidated and you can just see how much leverage has increased over the past month so it was pretty very low leverage in march and april and then right around the first week of may the leverage started picking up a lot I meaning traders were just getting really anxious really aggressive with their trades they were excited about possible price movements which is interesting because this was a period of flat market action that was when we were at thirty thousand for a long time so you'd expect traders to maybe get a little bored then, move out of positions, not be excited by the markets. No, they. this was the period of time where we kept hearing all the Bitfinex whales were buying and just all the whales were buying. So the leverage traders, they were doing the same thing. So they started picking up their leverage in the first week of May, and then they really ramped it up here in the second week of May. Then the Terra implosion happened right here. So then leverage didn't really increase afterwards. The, Terra implosion didn't really lit, didn't affect the market too much as we remember, so it didn't liquidate anyone, so the leverage didn't go down, but no new leverage positions were increased. It was flat, so it appears that investors did sort of back off their leverage positions a little bit. They didn't close their leverage positions, but they didn't add to them. They were a little spooked by the Terra incident. That lasted about three weeks, four weeks, and then first, second week of June, again, another huge spike in leverage and that was right before the consensus uh the the first uh implosion the first price spike down about two weeks ago the consensus slash interest rate hike happened and so again leverage was increased right before a big event happened so again that actually liquidated a lot of people but the amount of leverage in the marketplace only flatlined so you would have expected this to go down it didn't and the metrics that are showing on friday showed a lot of Funds are moving from spot exchanges to derivatives exchanges. Those are futures exchanges that use leverage. So that shows me that even with a lot of liquidations, it shows that a lot of new positions, new leverage positions are being initiated. And that's why the total amount of leverage is remaining flat and not decreasing as you would think would happen when a lot of people are getting liquidated. So it shows investors are still excited by the markets and it shows the drastic price moves in either direction are going to happen almost certainly because these investors are not stepping out of their leverage position. So it's only a matter of time when we don't know direct which direction it is. But if the market keeps directing, keeps tracking downward, then it's much more likely the loose leverage positions will result in spikes downward, similar to what we've been saying. Then I put up this tweet yesterday, my prediction for rock bus. Everyone's at, you know, when's the bottom? What's the bottom? The general consensus is it sort of feels like a bottom, but not quite there yet. We're not seeing specific macro signals. The general sentiment is it just, it's a little bit longer. So I said my prediction for when we've hit bottom is when mainstream media starts saying BTC is going to zero. And so far, there's a little bit of jet in that chatter, not too much. Unfortunately, I wish there was more, but I just remember back in 2018, that that's when the market turned around so we were like right the equivalent of here 
right now as opposed to 2018. And then I remember when the prices, they hovered around 3500 to 4000 for a while. Everyone was depressed and in a bad mood, didn't think they could go lower. Then they went down to 3000 right here. And that's when the headlines really kicked in. Bitcoin really could go to zero this time. We, I know everyone was in denial. It really could. It was just a flush of major headlines. And then everyone, including myself, we started thinking, wow, I, I think it actually could. And we started to doubt it. And then the moment that happens, that's when it reverses. It's like it's like th this huge wave of stress and attention is just taken off the markets. And then that is exactly what the market needs to just relax and then start moving up. So I will be looking for a lot of headlines to the effect of BTC is going to zero. I've been seeing a couple like this one here. Yeah, Bitcoin critics say BTC is going to zero this time. These three signals suggest otherwise. That was a couple days ago. Here's another one. Bitcoin long-term holders are finally giving up. Report this is good. These are the sort of negative headlines that indicate we're getting close to a bottom. This one from Bloomberg, newbie crypto investors bought the hype. They got hammered by the sell-offs is good. The more negative headlines we get, the more intense they're going to get to the effect of Bitcoin actually could go to zero. And that's the sign of a bottom right there. So we're getting closer with these headlines. We're not quite there yet, but I will keep track of that. Let's move on to the news for the day. It's a story out of uh, Los Angeles here. California man pays a hitman 13K in Bitcoin to kill his ex-girlfriend. Scott Burkett, a 25-year-old resident of Beverly Hills, reportedly pleaded guilty to transferring 13000 worth of Bitcoin to a hitman he met on the dark web. So we see a lot of these kinds of stories, not usually in Beverly Hills. That's a little, little interesting. Also, $13,000, I mean, it's just kind of... It, in a comical way, it's kind of indicative of the recession upon us. Ever we all watch Datelines is what usually like fifty thousand dollars or something, thirteen thousand. It's like barking prices right there. And then also, and then of course, all coin Gorn beats me to the punch with this tweet here. I literally had this tweet lined up. I was outside taking a run or something when I thought of it. I couldn't just couldn't get to my phone. I get back and then he beats me too. It's the second time this happened. The tweet when the hitman finds out how much bitcoins dumped he might kill the guy too exactly that's funny yeah so this this insinuates that this incident happened several months ago maybe three four five months ago bitcoin is way up you don't want to aggravate a hitman he's already getting a low getting paid a low price of thirteen thousand, and then with the you know value of bitcoin tanking 50 percent since then now he's only getting paid five six seven thousand that's <laughs> it's not gonna be happy but no, it was an undercover agent anyway, so that was irrelevant. But yes, all coin going for the second time is beating me to the punch with an exact tweet I was going to put out. Moving on. So the Terra, the Terra insider, new evidence on the Terra case, and the, we all know that it was an intentional attack, but I guess the insider insider suspect that that's been eliminated um as i said last week they had put a, it was a, it's a separate entity within the terror ecosystem they had put up a, a tweet showing that they had burned some coins and the address that they had sent their coins from their wallet address was one of the attacking wallets but i guess it cz has confirmed it's the kucoin hot wallet meaning when this entity was burning their coins they were just sending their own coins from kucoin here so anytime you send coins from kucoin that's it's going to show that as your address wallet. So we know that the attacker, in part, used, you know, sent coins from a KuCoin to carry out his attack. But that's, you know, so many other trades like that, too. So that doesn't help us too much. So, yeah, the insider uh, suspect has been eliminated. I'm not really sure why it took everyone so long to figure this out. I mean, it's not really public information what the KuCoin or Exchange Hot Wallets are, but the people in the know know that's like CZ runs an exchange. He's going to know what the KuCoin Hot Wallet is. And it takes like a month for people to figure out that one of the addresses is the KuCoin Hot Wallet, meaning it gives us no evidence whatsoever other than just part of his attack was carried out sending his funds from KuCoin. So he used a mix of Binance, KuCoin... Coinbase, I think, too, use the wormhole. But yeah, I mean, it, it honestly seems like we're just uh, never going to catch this guy. It's going to be one of the great mysteries, but we are no closer to solving this than we were a month ago. So I think that will just not be solved. Solana, this is an interesting story, came out yesterday. Solend users voted to grant emergency power to Solend Labs to temporarily take over a whales account to avoid liquidation chaos. So this was interesting here. 
So I guess the biggest whale in the Solan deposit pool, he has about 20 million USD worth of Sol. He was getting dangerously close to being liquidated. And so the Solana team, this was as prices kept going down, the Solana team reached out to him to try to get him to sell some of his tokens so he wouldn't be liquidated. Because as we've seen, as I'm going over the whole show here, that liquidations then cause a greater cascade of sales. So Solana was being a pretty astute and savvy, I think. They're trying to reach out to the person. The person wasn't even responding to their emails. Seems like it's probably just a big crypto fund who has a position in Solana and they don't really care if they're being liquidated. They have a million positions to worry about. So it seems like they couldn't in touch, get in touch with the guy, so they voted to grant emergency power. They basically voted to just seize the wallet and then sell it over the counter to prevent it from being liquidated and have further sales happen. Of course, some people are for it. The vote passed. Some people think it's a good idea. Some people think, well, it's decentralized. That's the classic example of being centralized. So it's a bad idea. I mean, I think it's a pretty good idea. We have seen liquidations happen before like this. They do affect prices temporarily. It's good Solana was looking into that. In the end, they didn't really need to do much about it because then Sunday the prices went back up. So they backed off seizing control of the wallet. But if prices keep going down, they will probably seize this whale's wallet and we did as i said we would chain xcn we did see this happen last week just the temp then it totally recovered afterwards but for about an hour or two three hours it was down right here it, it um it looks like so a lot of leverage positions were added about 42 million in advance of consensus last week because they were one of the lead sponsors so people like me very you know bullish on the coin it's the lead sponsor coming out might as well enter a leverage long position then just a totally unrelated the the market crash happens on sunday completely unrelated to that so then it looks like one whale for about five million dollars here it looks like he sold just immediately here which then caused the 42 million of liquidations to happen instantly which plummeted the price temporarily about 90 percent significantly then it rebounded about an hour or two later but yeah, it presented some great arbitrage opportunities right down there. Um, but yeah, I say it was probably it was probably the whale who bought up here because this whale is just a terrible trader. I mean, he sells way too fast here, gets obviously wrecked in slippage, just clears a five million dollar trade in like a minute. It sounds like then when he bought, same thing, he just clears this buy trade immediately, just didn't kind of straddle it out a little to avoid slippage. So it's probably this person just. Panic selling with the market downturn last week, but but yeah, so so this I guess Solana probably saw this. And that's what they were doing. I guess the good news is that this is the opposite sort of arbitrage. This arbitrage helps correct the prices, get them in line with each other. It's not like the Terra arbitrage, the Algo stablecoin arbitrage, where the swapping of the governance coin and the stablecoin then take the price further away from its peg towards zero. This arbitrage, the price the price is too far away from its peg. From its you know medium price the price it should be so then traders are going to immediately get in buy in the low just a good good arbitrage opportunity that's going to bring the price up and that's exactly what happened it brought it up to pretty much exactly the price before this whale bought in the first time but yeah no i was watching the message boards a few traders last week during the carnage they were able to capitalize on it this guy here XCN bond sold. He got a 10x in 10 minutes, uh, cleared 50,000 USD profit. That's a good clean trade right there. I was watching this too. Two hours. It, was, it wasn't just like a quick five minute thing. Two hours. The price was down low. I, I knew it was it was a good trade. I think it was just a long day for me. But two videos that day. It was like 11 p.m. my time. I'm like, oh, I'll deal with it tomorrow. I know the price is going to go up big time, but I'll deal with it tomorrow. Like my lazy ass, I'm regretting big time. But then this guy here, he cleared at the trader of the week last week and all the carnage one guy clears 50,000 a clean trade right there props to him pissed at myself for not doing the same thing moving on it's cold doubts get they've been having a lot of activity developer activity action happening let's go over some of the stuff they've been up to so they mr modules announced the revolt token the spinoff token from for the people building the ecosystem it is launching on june 27th so that's good i think that what's that next monday so it is officially coming out there is a date that's good. He's appointed some queens and the guardians of that token. Uh, Revolt token passed audit with the same uh, with solid proof. This was the same audit company that audited Colts. So that's good. They're one of the big ones. Cold. They they officially announced their circulating supply recently. This got verified in coin market cap. So it's at sixty five percent of their coins are out in circulation. That's about the highest I've ever seen. Usually it's between ten and fifty percent. 
So 65%, that's good. That means it just has less coins that are going to be unlocked in the future, pretty much less than any other project I've ever noticed, because then that's that's good, because when coins become unlocked, then that's sell pressure immediately, because those coins, some of them are going to get sold immediately. So that was a good development right there. The word of math is just great on the project here. Just some of the comments from the coin market cap comment board. It's mind-boggling how underrated Colt is. Best of what crypto aims to achieve. What else? Cold bullish on a mission. What else? Cold only starting growth. Cold breakout intimate. So the buzz has just always been there. They were back in the top 10 uh, most buzzworthy social activity DeFi projects on Ludo Crush last week. They were on this list a lot like a month or two ago. Then they weren't quite so much during the crowd, during the post terror implosion. Now they're getting back on these top 10 social media metric lists so that is good and when i did my video on them if you can see that so this was i've done i think like 40 videos by now this was my most viewed video of all 4.6 thousand 4600 views so that was of all the 40 videos that was the most viewed by far and in terms of watch time it was number three so in terms of both metrics it was right at the top it had the most comments too i believe a lot of cultures were commenting on that one so the but the the community is very strong it's buzz is good than this i talked about here last week but yeah last week in this ufc fighter brendan allen he came out in his uh first fight in the cult mass gave them a shout out in the interview right beforehand and uh, mr modest confirmed he was not paid for this he is just a fan i guess he must be on crypto twitter he must be uh one of the people in the cult out twitter page here but yeah he's just a fan of cult probably on some of their tokens Came out, gave him a shout out. That's great. Good grassroots, free advertising there. It said Colt UFC, good fit, it seems like. So that was cool. And then the other projects in the Colt ecosystem are doing very good. So Drip2, I talked about this one the other day. Shop to Earn Network. Um, they were on the top gainers and losers list a couple days ago last week at 38%. All these sort of lesser known earning ecosystems are really gaining some buzz now that DeFi is going to. It's always going to be there. It's the allure is just lessened a little bit in the post Terra and post Celsius debacles. So in that metaverse is always going to be niche. Uh, NFTs are always going to be niche. So it's what's the next ecosystem and all coins that could really take out. I think it's going to be one of the earning ones, and most people tend to agree with me. We saw it was play to earn, then move to earn. What is the next one going to be? Shop to earn's possible. I've seen learn to earn. I've seen work to earn, uh, sleep to earn, all that sort of stuff. But all the different niche earning ecosystems I've seen are picking up buzz on Twitter, like Drip to Earn. What else? And then there's another project that Cold Dow's partners with, the People Dow, a similar sort of hyper deflationary incubator VC style coin. They're trading on exchanges. They're on OKX. They've been in the top five highest trading volumes. And OK, I mean, look at this number five highest trading volume right behind ETH, BTC, Tron. This is an Asia exchange, remember? And then Solana. So then number five people, it's pretty impressive. They are in the Colt Dow ecosystem right here. So maybe an OKX listing for Colt Dow in the future. Could be. Could be. We shall see. But yeah, so that's it. So, um, and then, yeah, just uh, final point here. So just, I think people doing altcoin, like the people thinking of starting an altcoin project, I mean, now is exactly the best time to do it. Obviously, all you're probably reading on Twitter is, no, altcoins, no, and the market's going down, altcoins tank more, etc. Well, yeah, that's all true. But you got if you start an altcoin project now, the initial cost of sweating up the website, white paper, Twitter, it's next to nothing, let's be real. And when's the project going to first be on exchanges? Maybe the first decentralized exchange is three to six months. So what's the market going to be like in three to six months? It's almost certainly going to be up. And then when you do the tokenomics, they do. So you do the tokenomics sooner, probably a month into the project. They do set an arbitrary token price. So the average token price at launch is going to be X cents per token or a dollar per token or something like that. So then... When the coin comes out on the exchanges, that's going to be again three, you know, two to five, three, six months later. The market is almost certainly going to be up, so it's going to be free money. So then the to the, the all coin price, the first day it launches on exchanges, if the market's up two times, the all coin price is going to be up two times. And since you put in next to nothing to actually start the all coin, get the Twitter page and the white paper up, then that's just free profit right there with very little upfront costs. So I'm, I'm getting more and more messages from all coin teams like this, some earning teams, all sorts of teams, even some DeFi teams. 
but people got they got to be thinking in the future you don't think all the chatter you hear right now in all coins that's true in the trading sense you think when is your project going to come out on exchanges and what's the market going to be like then it's almost certainly going to be up we know at a bare minimum flat slightly up it could be up significantly more so that's free money for you because then the token price is going to follow the market like that so yeah if you have a new altcoin project reach out to me a lot of teams are it's always good i am a big altcoin fan myself and i think it's a great time to start your projects that's it for now ben crypto signing out again hit the subscribe button here on youtube bottom right corner follow me on twitter at ben crypto show look for the fun poll tomorrow catch you on later